welcome back. This is lecture two from uh, for your rationale of psychological profiling uh, for violent crimes. So um, this is where we left off, and there was something I kind of wanted to I probably should elaborate on as far as these different experiences, you know, developing uh, the different core values. So trustworthiness, you know, as far as you know whether that person is going to be trustworthy or not. You know, is there any benefit for them based on going back to what we talked about before, based on the different things like the, you know, the environment they grew up in, did they, was that uh, reinstilled in them or was it instilled in them in the first place? Uh, and then also, you know, biologically, you know, with mental illness, does that, you know, it plays roles in, uh, you know, how you view yourself and how you want to uh, interact with other people. So, that's one aspect of it. Loyalty and honesty, basically, I'm going to kind of group those together for what I'm going to talk about next. But uh, so basically, when you look at uh, some of the different, you know, say a famous example of a serial murderer, even though he was a mafia hitman, okay, um, Kuklinski, all right. So he's a great example, uh, Richard Kuklinski, of someone, you know, Yes. Would you probably categorize him as sociopathic, potentially psychopathic? Yes. However, he also uh, seemed to show uh, like the inability to have a relationship with anybody outside of um, his, you know, his immediate family. So, um, and what I mean by that is his own, not the one he was raised in, but the one he ended up, you know, a woman he ended up marrying and his children from that marriage. Um, and so he's more so sociopathic, uh, but he also states that you know he grew up in a home that his dad had uh, murdered one of his other uh, siblings, I believe a brother, and then another brother of his was ended up uh, ended up in prison uh, because he had um, basically had misconduct with a twelve year old. Okay, so there's that. Uh, he had some other abuse issues. You know, he dealt with abuse when he was growing up. Uh, and he had said basically that he got to the point where he didn't truly uh, value or think about anybody else and didn't see them as uh, people like you and I would, um, except for his own immediate family that he had. He, he, uh, you know, he had a relationship with his wife and his children. Um, they later on said they really didn't know exactly what he did for a living. I don't know if that was just being naive or they truly had no idea. Uh, but you know, they said that they thought he was some type of uh, you know, broker or something along those lines because uh, you know the type of conversations he would have uh, with his business partners. Uh, also the um, fact that they lived in a middle to upper middle class you know, neighborhood, a su suburb. Um, that's all he really knew. Uh, but, you know, like I said, he would later on say that they were the only people that he really even had a true relationship uh, and could be honest and loyal to them. He didn't trust anybody else. So uh, that's also something I want to add to the loyalty and honesty aspect of it. Reverence. Uh, here's another thing. You know, do people develop this respect or reverence for authority? Do they respect uh, the, uh, you know, the lives of other people in general, you know, the sacred aspect of life itself? Those are all things that uh, can be impacted by the stuff we talked about before, you know, the culture they were raised in and currently live in. Personal choices obviously make a difference too, but then, uh, you know, biological side of, you know, mental illness or uh, some dysfunction. Um, and then also, you know, just the, those are kind of the, the major outliers, life experiences. Okay. So I just want to touch on that real quick. Um, yeah, I kind of go back over that. So as it states here, personality is the sum total of what a person is, you know, such as their attitudes, values, personal experiences, etc. cetera, um, because you can overcome certain things. And we discussed this in previous lectures that, you know, a person can overcome a rough uh, childhood experience, you know, whether it be uh, mental, physical, sexual uh, abuse, whether it be, um, you know, difficulties in terms of uh, developmental type of 
issues, um, mental health issues. Those are all, those can all be overcome. So either way, um, the one interesting thing about, uh, personality, because it says personality in the crime here towards the top of the uh, slide is that personality at the core rarely ever changes. Um, and that's something I find interesting, you know, just simply because you see people or you hear people talk about uh, saying, oh, well, I want to be with so-and-so because I think I can change them. Yeah, they they are, you know, no, they don't really treat me well, or they, uh, you know, they're not the best person sometimes. But I think they can be different with me, and I can change them. Unfortunately, based on science and research and what we know about the personality, if it is a core issue that person has, good luck. You're not going to change that person. So all you're going to do is uh, delay the inevitable of being hurt yourself or causing other pains and problems. Uh, it doesn't mean give up on people. Uh, it just simply means don't try to rely on the fact of, oh, well, they'll change for me or it's different. That's not the case. Okay. I see that a lot, unfortunately, with uh, different relationships people get in and they'll stay in them when they shouldn't because they feel like they can change that person. If you can't, the simple way, a little side note here for advice, uh, relationship advice. Um, you are better off rather than trying to find someone that you want to change into who you want them to be. The better option is to find someone who already uh, kind of fits into what you, what you like, what you would want from someone, um, you know, and make it, make sure they're a good person. You know, there's far more, you know, whatever you use for your standards, um, uh, be realistic with it and also just uh, be mindful of the fact that that person is likely not going to change. They may change the little exterior or not exterior, but the <clears throat> more peripheral um, parts of their personality or how they do things, but at their core, it's not going to change. So just thought I'd put that out there. Uh, and you can read the bottom of there about the blending of culture, biology, uh, and experiences. Okay. So uh, some things I want to discuss here. And this is kind of going to be the end part of this discussion for now. Uh, I know the first two had been kind of brief and not really getting into the meat of it so much. Uh, but I do want you to, to think about this because we talk about, you know, I'll say if, you've, if you haven't, you will take crime scene and criminal investigation uh, with me. And uh, we talk about obviously how physical evidence can be used at a crime scene. I think that's pretty much common sense about you know, how, how we want to look for physical evidence at a crime scene. But here in this class, we'll also discuss how physical and non-physical evidence are actually uh, related, how they can, one can uh, help you kind of determine or uh, have a better idea of what to look for in the other side of it. Um, and we'll go into that, you know, as far as what physical evidence you should or should not see in certain cases, or if you see it or don't see it, what sort of what that can indicate about a person, the offender's personality, their age, their uh, level of understanding, uh, all that kind of stuff. So uh, just be aware, like it says up there, physical and non-physical evidence can be used to assess personality involved in a violent crime. I don't want to go into that too deep right now because we will later, but basically think about things like what type of injuries um, were used? Were items that were present at the scene used and left there? Uh, did the person plan it out and you know use gloves? Did they bring their own? If there was a weapon used, would they bring their own? Things like that. We'll discuss that later. <clears throat> but uh, the last thing I want to talk about is this cycle of violence leading to an addiction of impersonal uh, violence. So basically, cycle of violence means whether it be at home or in someone's daily lives, they get exposed to violence. Uh, and the way they choose to react to that, if it is, in fact, violence, uh, responding to violence, or just their way of responding to the environment they're around, eventually, just like anything else, if you get into something, do it often enough, it becomes habitual, and that is how you, it becomes almost like your automatic or default setting as far as a default response. And then, eventually, for some of these people that violence becomes more of an addiction um, 
And no longer is it a violence, you know, say violence here is against someone specific or some group specifically that you do not uh, like, agree with, or who's harming you or whatever. Okay, you have that. But then habitual violence basically becomes, you know, to where you, it is on a regular basis, but it still has a, uh, a personal touch to it, meaning like you still have an issue with that particular person uh, that you are being violent towards. However, when you reach this into the addiction to impersonal violence, as it indicates with impersonal, meaning they can see that violence separately and they don't really care who it's done to and they can impersonalize that uh, that setting to like, take a person and basically that be person becomes an object uh, to whom they can perform a violent act. And the violent act is actually what they're more concerned with as opposed to who it's against. So, all right. So that being said, um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of cut it off there. And then we'll start talking about this modus operandi and signature on the next lecture. So I will uh, let you guys go. And I look forward to uh, being able to talk to you when we talk about signatures and modus operandi.